the feeling of being Ozzy on stage is better than a second. Hi, I'm Ozzy Osbourne. I am from a Rolling Stone UK cover show. The Beatles. When I was a kid, when I was at school, I can remember, vividly remember walking down the, the road with a transit, blue transistor radio on my head, and She Loves You came on, and that changed my life. I thought, like, what the f is this? Because it was there before them, it was like Skiffle and like uh, Rocker Billy kind of thing. But then when the Beatles came, it just stopped. My son said, I don't understand why you, I like a lot of it, you know. But it was, it was the founding moment in my life when I was doing what I wanted to do. My father w w bought me a PA and a microphone. And that was, that's something once said to me, uh, a long while after, what was the best gift that I ever had? And I couldn't think of it, all these diamonds, whatever. I thought one well, day, my father hadn't have bought me that microphone, and, yeah, I would not be sitting there. Anyway. He's a working class man. He wasn't a big PA, it was a 51 box. But it was a start, you know. Because, I mean, they got me gigs. I, I could write in, uh, uh, in adverts on the music shop. Ozzy Zig needs gig. And uh, I've got my own PA, and that, that got people around because nobody else did. Oh. Tony Naomi and I went to school, but he was in a different year than me. And he used to come to school with his guitar and play. We all lived in an area of like three miles of each other. I was in a band with Giza called The Rare Breed. I quit The Rare Breed, and he said, so I'm quitting as well. And Bill and Tony had just been busted with dough. So that, that uh, could you, folded their band of mythology, so-called mythology. And then like, we, all, we all got together and jammed out. We, we used to rehearse across the road from a movie theater. And one of the guys, I think it was Tony, said, isn't it strange that people pay money to go to see horror film? Why don't we start making horror music? There's a film called Black Sabbath. We didn't call it our name after the film. We just started making our own music, you know, jamming out. It was, it was like, when we got a producer, like Roger Brown, he trimmed it all off for us. And that would be better to do it that way. And the, the song Paranoid was written in five minutes. We needed a few minutes to finish the album. It was going to be called Warping's Paranoid World. And then someone just jammed something, something out of nowhere. The riff came, I can't with the melody. Who's writing some lyrics? Bill played the drum and the dub. If the the, the 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 excitement thing is when you're excited about your music, then other people they get excited at your music. That, that's like a double whammy. It's, it's the early days of any band that I've been with, being the being the most exciting time. It's, nobody's everybody's on the same boat, you know. I was having trouble with all sorts of my mental health. I used to have six smoke bombs and then run around naked, all kinds of <laughs> get arrested. It's the best job in the world. I, I, I watched an interview one day with Lennon and he says, he, he said, I remember watching you know, uh, uh, some bands talking on an interview. And he goes, hey, that's the best job in the world. And it's true. It's not a job. It's, it's, it's right. I mean, if I don't, if I never do another gig again, I've had the best life that anyone can have. But the woman I love, the family I love, but the job that I love, and I've got the people that love me, and I love them too. I can't, I can't tell you what the one is. It's just when you kind of, the band locks in with, 
with the audience. It's like, it's just like one fourth good night. I mean, ACDC can do that every night. Uh, Guns N' Roses can do that. There's very few bands that know what they have. They're more interested in their ego. I kiss for a f they put a f amazing show up. When you f for them. You know, it's just big. Excess comes with the job. Trapping drugs, co cocaine, <laughs> living on that. <laughs> God knows I was thinking we were cool. So all you do is that sniff <laughs> spend a night in a hotel tour and talk with crap all the time. But he was giving an experience. My Kelly just said, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a, my grandson's birthday on Sunday. He'd be born. He's a, he's a love of my life right now. Best thing in the world. Being a granddad, great, I love it. I mean, people, people go, oh, I see I was born a granddad. <laughs> they come to your house, wrap the <laughs> place, and go, oh, I, I'm lucky to have a wife, wife I mean, I, my first wife couldn't handle me anymore. <laughs> Sharon is. Channel will kick your ass. Oh, she, 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 she's got ways of getting back to me. She knows me. <laughs> I love my family, I really do. I've got a bracelet on, on a belt buckle, what she bought me in 19, uh, 20, about 20, 24th wedding anniversary. We're now celebrating that 40, 42nd. Wherever Sharon goes, I'll go. Well, I don't know how to react to that because it's, it's kind of a, a nice, lovely thing to happen. I don't know, I don't know what to say. Uh, I'm on. Uh, uh, um, I don't know why, I An icon, I suppose, is someone that, that, that people look up to, I suppose. Don't look up to me, boys, I think. Because, you know. Everyone I used to go party with, nearly all of them are dead.